Good morning. I really liked what Tom said in his devotion this past Wednesday. He said the church has left the building. Obviously a, a reference to Elvis for those of us who remember. Tom's absolutely correct. And in some ways where we are now has never been closer to the period of time when our church was first born. Last Sunday was Easter and we know that story pretty well, but what happens next? Well, a quick summary. Jesus appears to a lot of people, including the disciples, before he goes back to heaven. But before he leaves, Jesus tells a small band of believers, about 120 people, to wait in Jerusalem. And then, on the holiday they called Pentecost, 40 days after the resurrection, the Spirit of God fell on these believers in a powerful way and the church was born. They're so excited they go outside and a guy named Peter starts preaching about Jesus. He says this, God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard it, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Now, I interrupt here. I, I, you're saying, I know, I know, I know, I know what Peter's going to say. He's going to say, you guys need to start going to church, right? No, no, absolutely wrong. And this is the way Peter ends his little sermon. He says, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promises for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. 3,000 were baptized on that very first day and the church was born. But now, remember these early followers of Jesus were not trying to start a new religion. Christianity from the very beginning was a, about embracing an event of history, the resurrection. And, and, and I'm going to make this point repeatedly this morning. From the very beginning, the church has been a movement. It, it didn't begin as an institution or an organization. There were no denominations. There were no church buildings. There were no clergy. There were no laity. From the very beginning, the church began as a movement around one central idea, this resurrection of Jesus. It was a resurrection that galvanized these early believers and convinced them that Jesus was exactly who he claimed to be, the very Son of God. It was this simple event that launched the church. But the church was launched as a movement, not an organization. Let me give you an incredible principle. Movements move. If your church isn't moving, it's not a movement. But then something terrible happened. As time went on, this early movement began to transition into a location. It changed from a gathering of believers celebrating the resurrection to a place, a building. Now, I'd love to give you a two-hour presentation of church history, and I think that really is important. We need to understand our own history. But let me just say this this morning. Horrible things happen when you take a movement and try to change it into a building or even in an organization. Well, it's been 2,000 years now, and here we are. What brings us all together is this common belief that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that he rose from the dead, and that somehow that resurrection 
brings us eternal life. But here's what's cool. Ever since the opening day of the church, there have been people who have known the church is not about a building or an organization. There have been people who have gotten the fact that it's all about the resurrection of Jesus. I mean, that's why we cheer and clap when somebody gets baptized, because we get it. That's why we don't need four walls to be the body of Christ. And that's why a coronavirus can't even shut us down. You know, when you gather as a small group in your home, you're gathering as the church. And when you gather on the rough side of town to serve the poor, you're gathering as the church. And when you gather together to serve our children, you're moving with the church. There have always been and there will always be people who understand that it's not about sitting in a pew. So I, I don't know what comes to your mind or, or what you feel when you hear the word church, but I do hope in the middle of this pandemic your understanding of church might be changing a little bit. Tom's right, the church has most definitely left the building. And I hope you'll never allow yourself to slide back into thinking that the church is a place, or a building, or an organization, or a denomination, or even sets of rules and doctrines and regulations. Church is a way of life. Church is how we live 24-7. Church is a movement, and it's about Jesus, and it's about the good news of his resurrection. And whether you're moving or not, the church is still moving in a very mighty way in the world today. We need to decide whether we're going to come along or whether we're just going to sit on the sidelines and watch it go by. Would you have a word of prayer with me? Father, help us truly understand that the church is not the building. That we are the church. Help us understand for hundreds of years the early Christians never even sought the need to build a building. So keep us busy being the church. Remind us that it's okay for the church to leave the building. We do our best work out there anyway. So keep us safe. Keep those people who minister on the front lines of, of the health care. Keep them safe for the first responders. But in all things, we'll give you the glory and honor and the praise because you're still in control. Through Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen.